Hi, I'm still Sean with Backflow Supply. Today I want to talk about the RP4A, which is an assembly made by Apollo. It may also have the name of RPLF4A, the LF designating that it's lead free. This particular model that I have here is a lead free version, and you can tell by the white handles on the ball valves, and it's got a blue label, a blue metal plate that has the model number, the size, the serial number, and the month and year that it was built. So that's how you distinguish the two. The internal components are identical, um, exact same rubbers, plastics, everything for that. Um, today I just wanted to go over how you take this apart and show you some things to look for if you've got leakage coming out of the relief valve. Let's talk a little bit about some terms here. So these are ball valves or shutoff valves. You have an inlet ball valve that has a test cock on it. The outlet ball valve or number two shutoff does not have a test cock on it. Um, these are test cocks. You have four of them. Again, one on the inlet ball valve and then three on the main body. You have two check valves, a number one check valve and a number two check valve. They are identical inside except for the spring. The spring is heavier in the number one than it is in the number two. And you need to make sure that when you work on these that you put the spring back in the same position that it came from. The other component is the relief valve. This is where the vent is that the water will drip out of that sometimes you'll see if there's something wrong with the assembly or if you have a backflow situation going on. So I want to show you today how to easily take this apart. And I have loosened these already um, so I don't have to deal with the wrenches. And um, the first thing you want to do if you have to open this up is you want to make sure that you have your water to your backflow assembly turned off. You can simply do that with the inlet shutoff valve by turning that. This is just a simple tool that is made um, for it, or you can use your hand. Sometimes you'll want to use a longer wrench that you have some leverage, because sometimes it can be kind of tight. Then, and, and these are just dust covers on the top of these test cocks. They are not critical. Um, so if you lose one, it's not a big deal. But the test cocks have a screwdriver slot that goes across it. If it's going across it, it's off. If it's anywhere off of that, off the 90 degree mark, then it is part way open or all the way open. So every quarter turn is open, close, open, close, open, close. And you'll want to open these up and that'll drain most of the water out of the body and it'll come out of the vent here. Once that's done, then you'll get a crescent wrench and you'll just hook it onto the, the nut on the top of the of the check and just unthread it. And there's an O-ring on here. You don't want to lose that. It'll stay in place typically. And then you've got the check that's in here. And it is a contained spring, meaning that there is a way for it to be retained in place. Now sometimes that'll break, sometimes that'll come out when the spring and the broken retainer will come out when you're taking the cover off. And you can get this check out in two different ways. And again, this is going to be much easier because this is an assembly that's only been used for demonstration. It's never been installed. Um, I like to take it out all as one unit. And I do that by using a screwdriver and just getting underneath the retainer with my hand on the retainer to help hold it and to help move it back and forth. And sometimes it's helpful to do that from the other side as well. And that'll come out as one complete unit. The other way you can do that is that this retainer that's here you just push it down and quarter turn it, and that will relieve the, te relieve the tension off the spring. The spring will come out, and then there's a poppet assembly. And it's got a red rubber disc on the end with a washer and a screw. And then you've got the seat or the cage. And that also has an O-ring that's down on the bottom. But I find that if you take that apart piece by piece, it's more difficult to get this seat out, to get your fingers down in there and to be able to pry it. So that's how that comes apart. The number two check is the identical procedure. Take the cover off, make sure the O-ring's with it, and then you'll want to work that check out. Again, same procedure. Reloose, uh, loosen that retainer. Take the spring out. And I'll show you the differences in these springs here in a second. The poppet assembly with the rubber disc on it and the screw in the washer and the seat. And that's all that there is to that. Um, so here's the springs. This one in uh, my 
right hand <laughs> is a bigger, heavier spring than the number two check spring. There, it's a much lighter, I hope you can see the differences in those. And so you don't want to mess those up or mix those up, sorry. Now, for the relief valve, you've got these four bolts that hold the cover in place. So again, I've loosened these. It's much easier for me to do this. And when you take this off, the diaphragm will come off by itself with or with the cover. There's nothing holding it in there. Oh, one other thing I want to mention is sometimes when you're turning this on and it's on your lawn sprinkler system uh, over the winter, you may turn your sprinklers on to or the water pressure to your backflow to your sprinklers and you'll see a spray coming out of in between where this cover plate here bolts to the body. It'll have a fine mist coming out from around there. And that's an indication that there's been freezing, that water was left in this relief valve. You can't blow that water out and there's no way to drain it out without taking the cover off. So that will cause the cover plate to bow and it can also cause the relief valve stem to break. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So here's the cover plate and here's the diaphragm. And it's just a square piece of rubber with a notch at the top. That This is where the water comes through to the high side of the diaphragm to push that relief valve closed. You'll notice that there's some wavy lines on one side of it and not on the other. Sometimes it will be reversed. Oftentimes you'll find this, the lines to the cover plate so that they lines up to the cover plate. It does not really matter. You need to be more aware of the, the formation of this piece of rubber. When you get it brand new, it's completely flat. But over time, because of this relief valve stem, Again, this is very easy to pull out for me. Sometimes you'll have to pry it out with a screwdriver or stick a screwdriver up the vent to push on the back side of this to push it out. And it should come out all as one piece. Um, you've got a diaphragm plate on this end with a screw in it. And then you've got a rubber disc with a screw on it on this end that's attached to the stem. And there's a bushing that rides on the stem. Um, and then there's an O-ring underneath of it. And the last thing that's in this relief valve is just a seat. And that's only held in by an O-ring at the end. So this uh, valve stem will go in there like this. You can see the gap in between the red disc and the seat. And the water pressure pushes against that and closes it. You don't always need to pull this out. But if you want to, it's very easy. You just put your finger in there and kind of pry it at an angle and it'll come out. And then to put it back, it's the same thing. It's very easy to just push that back into place. Now I'm going to show you how to take this apart if you have to. And you just hold it together with the palm of your hand and your fingers to hold the, the tension of the spring as you unscrew that screw. And then the plate comes off, the spring comes off, and the bushing comes off. And that will leave you with the stem with an o-ring on it. And when you put this back together, you need to make sure you put enough lube on this O-ring so that this bushing will ride, uh, ride freely across that stem. That's how that goes. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's also an O-ring that sits on this bushing. And that sits against the brass in the relief valve. So you need to make sure that you put it on in the right place. Um, the other thing for this disc, sometimes that disc, see how that's sitting in there and it's flat? Sometimes, for whatever reason, that gasket will get sucked out and hang over the edge of the stem. And all you have to do is um, take your screwdriver. Sorry, now I've got lube on my fingers. I'm not able to turn that. I didn't plan that very well. I'm going to put this back together so I can hopefully undo that screw. And again, it's just the reverse. Hold it in the palm of your hand. Use your fingers uh, to give you some tension against that diaphragm plate as you tighten that screw in. Now I'll see if I can get that screw out. Yeah. So a lot of times if you loosen this and it 
it also can sometimes just be bubbled. If you just loosen that, it'll go right back into the flat formation, and you'll just want to keep an eye on it. You may have to replace that. If that keeps happening, it's going to break down the rubber. But all it is is just a flat piece of rubber. Sometimes, if you need to, you can flip that rubber disc over um, to get a, a clean surface. And then you just put it back in, work it around the hole, and take your screw and just snug it down. There's no torque on these. So once you've got that there, make sure you've got your o-ring on your bushing. That just pushes right back into place. Your diaphragm, again make sure that you put it in the same way it came out. Uh, you'll have a little bit of an indentation on it. Put your plate back on and tighten your bolts down. And again it's just snug. Now one other comment about that, uh, this relief valve cover, if it does bow, I've had success mostly pounding those flat on a flat surface. And I've got just a, a vise here that has a flat piece of metal behind the vise itself. It's just perfect size for this. And I pound the outside edges with it with just a normal hammer. And uh, like I said, I've had almost 100% success. Sometimes I wonder if it hasn't warped the body as well and it won't line up right. Um, now for the checks, it doesn't matter which poppet. Usually I would recommend taking them apart one at a time. Take it apart, inspect it, and then put the other one in. And I'm going to show you on another size, one that's already been stripped down, and what to look for inside of here in just a minute. Um, especially if it's freeze has frozen or possibly frozen and you've got water coming out of here I'll show you a very common area for that leakage to come from here's a one inch version of this RP4A and you can see number one the green that's kind of built up on the housing which isn't bad in this case um, trying to focus that in a little better and the crack is right here so that's what you want to be looking for and this hole right here that's where the water gets diverted down to the relief valve and pushes that closed first that's called the internal sensing line so th some things to look for in there so you uh, also on these poppets, I'm sorry, you can flip that rubber disc over sometimes as well and get a good sealing surface again if you need to. But that just slides into the seat, the spring goes on top, and then you'll want to make sure that you're able to control that pressure of the spring as you're putting that retainer back on, and then you quarter turn it. And then I just work it back and forth a couple times to line that spring up. This just pushes down into place and make sure you get it down all the way and putting some lube on those o-rings will help and you only put lube on the o-rings that are being pushed or twisted into place so like on the bottom of these seats would be helpful um, and then just put the cover back on and tighten that number two check same thing you take the seat you take the poppet assembly you take the spring you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around put the retainer back on there work it a little bit straighten that spring and push it into place and then the cover gets tightened on again make sure that you turn all the test cocks back off after you you're done putting it together and you're ready to turn it back on then you'll just turn that shutoff valve back on Turn it on slowly and you can hear the water fill and go into your lines and then once you get it on the rest of the way and you have no dri dripping out of here then you know that you've done it correctly um, and ideally it should be tested after it's been repaired. Okay now I want to show you this um, this is a, a one inch of the RP4A that's been stripped down it was one that was frozen Oftentimes I can find cracks on the outside of the body, even just hairline cracks, but they won't be leaking out to the outside. And I, I find them oftentimes on the one inch around these little circles. 
and they're, they're on both sides. Sometimes I can see them there and just look anywhere on the outside for hairline cracks. Again, it won't be necessarily coming through to the outside, but that's an indication that the body has, has been stretched and expanded and the O-rings aren't going to seal right anymore. Okay, so that's the RP4A. Coming up soon, we're getting to that time of year where people are already starting to turn these on or they've had some freeze damage and uh, it's in service as it is and people need to know how to take these apart and soon I hope to have those videos up to cover a variety of the backflow assemblies. I hope that this video was clear enough. I know I kind of bounced around from place to place. Uh, if it's not, please contact me. My phone number and email are on the end slide and that is my preferred method of contacting me. I get back to you the quickest with those or you can post a comment to this video. I also encourage you to subscribe and like this video if you find that it's helpful. Thank you very much for watching this and I hope you have a good day.